Um, right, okay, so uh, we are in uh, a field called Stanley's Walk. Um, which has been in no-till for five years now. So this was one of the first fields. When we were talking about the barriers to getting into no-till, this was one of the trial fields that we did. Um, and the first crop uh, was a crop of peas that went into a, a huge giant cover crop of um, Hungarian forage rye. Uh, then we went into no-till wheat, um, cover crop into there. Uh, then it was... Um, spring barley, then it was winter barley, and now we're into oilseed rape. So the winter barley straw has been chopped. Uh, we've put um, a biological kind of breaking down product on it, molasses, humic acids, things like that. Um, bacteria? Bacteria in there as well. Yep, everything just to try, try and remove and reduce that sort of slug habitat, feed the biology in the ground um, all at the same time. And then we've got a crop of... Um, what do we have in here? It was obviously oilseed rape, but it's Django, uh, planted on the 15th of August, <coughs> about 2.5 kilos a hectare, aiming for 50 seeds in a square metre. I think nearly all of them have grown, which for this part of the Cotswold brash is quite good. If you look up on the shoulders of the hills where it's a bit stonier, it's not quite so good. Uh, we also put in here 10 kilos of vetches, uh, which we can see here, and they are growing really well. Um, and then there was also two kilos of bursine clover, which is this one here. Um, <clears throat> so if we if we dig something like this up, um, we can just have a look at the soil structure that we've got here. Not a, not a not a brilliant bit, but it's there. Um, so loads of loads of roots all going down through here, and these companion crops are all helping, all helping those roots. Um, <clears throat> what we've been finding, the longer we've been doing the no-till side of things, which is slightly different to the intercropping, but but relevant, I think, is that this sort of level of tilth just gradually gets deeper and deeper and deeper into the soil. So you can almost go into a field and think, ah, that's been no-till for two years because it's really narrow, but actually then as you get uh, further down the system, you get more organic matter and more drainage <clears throat> and more kind of biological activity, oxygen, going down further into the soil profile. Lots more bugs and everything. Did it, did it start improving <coughs> in the first year or does it take some time? It takes a couple around? of years for it to sort of start to adjust really. Um, because w one thing that these systems, when they're kicking off, I think, and George, George will ha you know, might have some different ideas, is lack of nitrogen in the system. Because what we're trying to do is bind everything into organic matter so that it doesn't leach out of the system. It then makes it really difficult to get crops established, hence the need for sort of seedbed fertiliser. But then this is, I mean, this is all, you know, that's all kind of hanging together. Um, <clears throat> with the, the glomalins and things like that, that the, uh, that the plant is giving off. Um, it smells of proper soil. soil.